Hi, this is John Oram, and I now want to talk to you about group delay as I understand it. To understand this audible experience, it is necessary to appreciate some audio facts. Individual sounds have harmonics, subharmonics of tones below the fundamental and multiple harmonics of tones above the fundamental. The same applies to a musical track made up of low notes and high notes, based around a root pitch that the track is related to. For a balanced track, we all have ideas of how it should sound. We may spend hours playing with the balance, or get an opinion from others, or even get an opinion from a mastering engineer. When we combine two frequencies together, we experience a distortion where one interferes or modulates with the other. This is called intermodulation distortion. For a clean and balanced sound, often termed as smooth or warm or musical, it is good to have as low an intermod as possible. If a group of frequencies are together at the same time, some measure of intermod must take place. If, however, the low frequency component is delayed in time in relation to the higher frequency component, so they are not together at exactly the same time, the intermodulation is greatly reduced or not present at all. Group delay in an audio path has characteristics of delaying low frequencies. As the frequency increases, the delay reduces to almost nothing, achieving the result that we require. Knowing what it is with the lows delayed from the highs, the intermodulation relationship is different from both bands being together. The phase shift due to capacitors and resistors in the signal path and throughout that path contribute to that delay. Interesting that in a directly coupled circuit or DC coupling with no caps, there is no group delay. And although a technical design achievement the sound is more than boring, in my opinion. Look at certain brands of pro audio. Brilliant tech brains create pure straight lines, flat frequency responses, and zero phase shift. And the end result is usually sounding dull and lifeless. The hot products are rated as musical and having coloration, and of course, hated by some. So if you're an electronic designer for musical product, Surely you need to be a musician with circuit design skills. It's a question of what do you want to achieve? Okay, let's get some coupling capacitors in the signal path and maybe some EQ stages to get some delay in place. That would be all too easy. And now we need to get a bit technical. In circuitry with resistors and caps, and sometimes inductors, we understand a mathematical relationship exists where frequency F is proportional to the reciprocal of R and C, or inversely proportional. In a coupling situation, the roll off frequency will equal one divided by C times R. More precisely, F equals one over two pi C times R. But that's enough of that. Let's remove the constants and consider the values of C and R. If, for example, C equals 100 and R equals 1, then C times R is 100. But if we take it the other way around, then if C equals 1 and R equals 100, C R still equals 100. It's the same value. The frequency roll-off is the same, but the sound is different. I discovered this as I started out in musical electronics back in the 60s. I had no idea what was going on except I liked the sound. I was in a guitar company where we had valve or tube amps and transistor amps. The valve amps had low value caps and high value resistors in the circuit path. We preferred the sound of these amplifiers. The transistor amplifiers with their circuitry had the opposite, large value caps low value R's. I employed my experience in my designs. That company was Fox, famous with bands of the period, The Beatles, Rolling Stones, thousands more.
In the 70s, I joined Trident Audio and still designing with my ears and some maths, created several and many products. The TSM and Series 80 both world recognized as audio leaders. In the 80s, when I got a computer, a state-of-the-art Tandon, 20 meg hard drive and one meg of RAM with a color monitor, I sold a Porsche car I was driving to buy that machine. <laughs> with some math software, I was able to input my circuits into a simulator and well, there it was. Group delay. The early days of Vox and the Triants all had that same characteristic group delay. I've employed similar design parameters ever since. So then the secret is out. In 1984, I studied SMT, surface mount technology, and decided to use this for all my future designs. Consoles, racks, guitar pre's, everything will be built in England using these tiny components. And lo and behold, surface mount caps being very small in size and typically small in value. And the R's can be any value, including high. So there it is. Listen to Opal from Acoustica Audio or the hardware version from Aurum High Def 55. And talk to me about my secret that I've now revealed to you, okay, and shared. And I think you'd agree that the sound is definitely an advantage over many other EQ or signal path systems. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. And let's hope that you will get to hear my designs and work out what this group delay is really doing. I hope you've learned something from this. Group delay is a significant audio effect. Enjoy. Listen to all my products, you'll get the characteristic the same. Thank you for listening.